Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and welcome back to another breakdown of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Even though there were several seasons of this show, I feel like certain episodes were reran more than others. I'd like to think I have a pretty decent memory, but when I was trying to come up with some darker episodes to talk about, I was drawing a bit of a blank. When I asked my viewers on Twitter what they thought, I saw a recurring response. The Tale of the Chameleons. I do remember this episode because it starred Tia and Tamara Mori, who were starring in Sister Sister at the time. I only remembered the premise, and thought it was pretty corny. A girl gets bit by a lizard, turning her into one, while the lizard turns into a carbon copy of her. It sounds pretty meh, but when I rewatched it, I remembered how dark it was. The writers of Are You Afraid of the Dark were pretty cautious when it came to deciding how scary to make their episodes and what kind of content would be appropriate. There's an unspoken rule about the permanence of death and how to portray a character who either dies or might die, and most of the time, horror for young adults keeps things vague. A viewer could see the worst in a situation, or they could imagine a more pleasant ending. I'm going to go ahead and show you an example from Goosebumps because R.L. Stein was known to use these parameters in his writing. In an old story, one of the lead characters de-ages into a baby and all he has to do is eat a magic cookie to turn back. The episode ends with a maybe he'll eat it or maybe he won't situation. These vague conclusions are just scary enough to have some impact, especially to a young adult. The tale of the chameleons kind of throws those unspoken rules out the window and offers the viewer something a little more disturbing. It's one of those episodes that sticks with you and when it comes up again you can't help but think, wow, that was effed up. As we begin the episode, we're greeted by the Midnight Society, who are ready to listen to the next story. It's Betty Ann's turn, who generally has an affinity towards the macabre and often writes weird stories with ambiguous endings. She decides to bring her new pet to the meeting, not sure why she's keeping it in a huge burlap sack, and she refuses to let anyone see it. His name is Spike, and we'll get the great pet reveal later. There are thousands of different animals on Earth. Most we know but a lot are still a mystery. Like chameleons? No. Our story begins in a pet shop where Janice and her friend Sharon are looking at the animals during a trip to pick up some fish food. There's also a bratty child harassing the pets. Uh, he really did put that gum in the tank. I hope the crew fished it out afterwards. <laughs> but for real, I really do. Janice tells the boy to stop bothering the animals and notices a very cute lizard. What is that? It's a chameleon. What? No, it's not. What the hell is wrong with this episode? It's teaching kids what not a chameleon is. I was so distressed by this that I had to Google are chameleons iguanas? That's in my search history now. I wanted to give this episode the benefit of the doubt. Perhaps iguanas, which is what you see here, are a type of chameleon. Nope. Turns out chameleons are in the iguana family. All chameleons are iguanas, but iguanas are not chameleons. I'm disappointed in you, are you afraid of the dark? You're willing to scare the crap out of little kids, but you can't get your lizard facts straight? Janice feels compelled to pet the lizard, deciding it's cute. It does an om nom nom, and to her surprise, it hurts quite a bit. She's so shocked that she knocks over the tank and the lizard escapes. Cutely. There is nothing more adorable than a lizard running. Look at this shit. Oh my god. Bite you once, bite you twice, or the water pay the price. <laughs> this kid is the worst. The lizard follows Janice and Sharon where they meet up with Janice's mom. The lizard sees the grocery bag and is like, hey, you got any nutty bars in there? And dives in. They get home and Janice's mom starts unpacking the groceries. The suspense while watching her reach in and out of the bag is palpable. How did that happen? Instead of helping her parents put away the groceries or clean up the broken eggs, Janice makes a fuss about wanting to dye her hair blue and buying a short dress for the school dance. It's never going to be problem free until you let me grow up. Let me dye my hair, mom. Meanwhile, the lizard is like, here I am. I'm gonna take all my savings and buy the dress myself. Yeah, there's maybe a dollar in there. The lizard makes another attempt to buy Janice, but the girls are sent to bed before it has the chance. Hi, Mrs. Robinson. And here's to you. The insatiable lizard strikes again while Janice is sleeping, then makes a run for it. Janice follows it, but finds it has turned into her. At least aesthetically. The lizard is still itself, and it's apparently evil. She recites the same weird poem that the bratty kid from the store said. Bite you once. Fight you twice. A little water, pay the price. What price, though? I feel like Janice didn't do anything wrong. In fact, she's the one who told the kid in the store to stop bugging the animals, so what price is she paying? This is a very weird fairy tale. She wakes up Sharon to tell her what happened. It was the chameleon from the store. It bit me again. Sharon, I think the chameleon wants to be me. 
Jen... That was not a chameleon. It bit me twice, and now it's coming after me with water. Oh no. Oh no. Not water. What's next? Food? Sharon is a really good friend and reassures her it was just a bad dream. She even sleeps next to her despite the whole a chameleon is trying to kill me with water story. Janice wakes up with a terrible rash, convinced she's turning into a chameleon. Sharon reassures her once again and goes downstairs for breakfast. Janice stays upstairs and gets ready for the day. Don't be an idiot. Words to live by. She hears someone turn on the shower, but no one is actually in it. When she turns around, she sees the lizard, now able to turn itself from a reptile to a human at will. She shoves Janice into the shower, and she promptly shrinks down into a lizard. Oh, it's so cute! I just love this little friend. Now the lizard has a chance at human life, which is apparently what she wanted. But before she can go about that, she grabs a scissors in an attempt to murder Janice. She stopped when Janice's mom drags her down to breakfast. To everyone's surprise, she starts acting like the perfect daughter. Suddenly, she doesn't want to dye her hair, and she tells her parents the dress was too old for her, and Sharon is like, what the hell is wrong with her? And what the hell happened to the rash? Janice sneaks in and the lizard girl tries to spray her with... What is that, nonstick cooking spray? Yeah, that'll show her. She's gonna be so slippery. In mid-conversation, fake Janice grabs a pan and tries to whack real Janice. Sharon doesn't see her scaly friend and asks what the hell she's doing. Lizard Girl tells her it was a mouse and that they should set traps. Man, remember all those fun times you had staying at your friend's house, eating breakfast, and setting up totally inhumane mouse traps? The lizard collects a package that was delivered to the house and quickly goes upstairs with it, leaving Sharon baffled at her erratic behavior. Sharon then spies her eating a goldfish. Nice creepiness factor. A well-timed cut makes it seem like she did eat it, which is an illusion that will definitely work on kids, but chameleons would likely have no inclination to eat a fish. They live in tree branches and don't exactly have the swift movements to catch one, so Lizard Girl would likely not even know what one is. I'm not letting this episode mislead anyone else, goddammit. I'm gonna give you all the chameleon facts. Even though this is not a chameleon, this is so confusing. Because fake Janice has been so nice, her parents decide to buy her a dress for the dance, which she hardly looks at. While she's feigning excitement, Sharon finds the box that was delivered earlier, which is holding a cute family of iguanas. Or uh, chameleons, sure. Uh, why don't you go try on the dress? We're gonna make some power drugs. What? Did he just say power drugs? We're gonna make some power drugs. Power drugs. That can't be right some power drugs. Nope, still getting power drugs. Carrots? Carrots are power drugs? I mean, they're pretty good for you. I hear they can turn you orange. Wait, is that a secret reference to how chameleons can camouflage? That's pretty clever, if true. Oh, they're just making a drink. Power drinks. Power carrots sounded a lot more interesting. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Mrs. Robinson? Heaven holds a place for those who pray. Anyway, fake Janice tries on the dress. What do you think, Sharon? It's a little ugly. Janice is now suspicious of Sharon, who seems anxious. No, I'm fine. I just need some of these power drugs. Real Janice finally gets a chance to strike and bites the phony on the leg. She tries to escape, but fake Janice snatches her up and wow, that's a toy lizard. Look at that thing, it's so blatantly fake. Definitely did not notice that as a kid. At this point, they get into a fight and fake Janice throws the real one into the garbage disposal, which has been used a few times earlier in the episode to foreshadow this exact scene. I remember having a visceral reaction to seeing this as a kid. Seeing animals in such severe danger hits you right in the stomach. I felt it even as I rewatched it, because even though nothing happened, the thought of this reptile being chopped up to pieces is disturbing. On top of that, fake Janice picks up a fucking cleaver! Were the writers okay? This is intense. Bite you once, bite you twice, a little water. Might be nice. Fake Janice is once again amazingly interrupted by her parents. Sharon grabs the box of lizards and heads to a well near the house. Fuck you, rock. Sharon tricks fake Janice into looking into her box of lizards. She hid Janice in there earlier and she lands her second bite. She turns back into a human, and Sharon is about ready to spray the imposter with a garden hose, but fake Janice starts twirling them around. Really though? Come on. You can keep track, they're barely moving. One of the Janices says she knows her parents, and the other says, yes, your parents that are in Hawaii. I don't know why Sharon doesn't ask more personal questions, ones that only her friends would know. It's not like she doesn't have time to grill them, neither of them are going anywhere. One of the Janices tosses the lizards into the well, saying that the fake one wouldn't do such a thing. Sharon agrees and hoses the other one. Oh, water. Adds some spice. Sharon picks up the lizard and tosses it into the well. 
Later, we see the fake Janus saving her lizard family which had crawled into the bucket. The real Janus, however, is still floundering in the well, pretty much left for dead. Holy hell, this is extra disturbing because it was Sharon who threw her in there and she pretty much has no way to climb out, so it's very clear that this is a death situation where the ending is permanent. There are a handful of Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes that don't end on a happy note, but in general the characters stay alive. A lot of the time they're trapped somewhere or in a weird predicament where danger is imminent, but outright death is rarely implied. Betty Ann, who revealed her pet to be a small snake, really knows how to tell a freaky tale. Right, final thoughts. Yep, this one certainly is memorable and dark. It's interesting because even though a lot of what happens is on the creepy side, I wouldn't say it's very scary, at least not visually. A lot of children's horror shows do some light body horror because kids like to be grossed out and as long as it's not gratuitous, it can be an effective and easy way to get some frights. But beyond the garbage disposal scene, there's not a lot going on. This is honestly one of the more maturely written episodes because it relies on suspense as opposed to weird looking characters. We don't even really get to see a human lizard hybrid. The most we see is Janice turning back right at the end and it's nothing to write home about. The Mori sisters do a really good job in their roles, especially Tamara, who played the lizard, or chameleon, iguana, whatever, she did a fine job at acting perfectly deranged and murderous. Obviously, it's kind of hard to ignore the fact that this is not a chameleon, even though they keep referring to it as one over and over. I understand not going with an actual chameleon because they're not very agile, but if that was the case, you could still just call it an iguana. Yes, the gimmick is they can camouflage themselves into the world as humans, which is typically a chameleon thing, but iguanas can also color change to adapt to their environments. So I don't think keeping it accurate would have been a problem. Maybe as a young kid I wouldn't have noticed, but it's kind of frustrating as an adult, and I also thought there were a few plot holes. We never see the bratty kid again, who originally spewed the little rhyme to Janice and Sharon in the store. Why did he know it? Was he originally a chameleon? Maybe another animal? I also don't think Janice really deserved to be antagonized. In a lot of horror, not just children's, characters who get their comeuppance tend to really deserve it. In Are You Afraid of the Dark, it's usually because the kid gets entitled or isn't listening to warnings, but all Janice seemed to be was a teenage girl wanting to rebel by putting some blue dye in her hair. She initially wanted to protect the lizard, so I don't think she really deserved the fate she got. Not that there always has to be a comeuppance, sometimes things can be just dark, but it's clear that's what the writers were going for. Her flaws were just a little too weak. I need a character to be a little more problematic than just, why can't I dye my hair? But hey, all's well that ends well. Again, this was a very memorable episode and I enjoyed rewatching it and discussing its place within the horror genre. If you have an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark you'd like to see me analyze, then please leave a comment. And until then, stay spooky. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my episode on the tale of the chameleons. If you're interested in more children's horror reviews, I have several more, but first, Patreon! Yes, Patreon, where you can tip me small amounts of money in exchange for knowing you've made me and my parrot very happy. I bought her a giant novelty pencil last month and she's very appreciative. If you can't afford to become a patron, no worries, likes and shares mean a lot to me. If you want to watch more of my work before deciding to subscribe, no worries, I recommend giving these a shot. The video on the right is about goosebumps and the video on the left is on the haunting hour. There's also a few Are You Afraid of the Dark breakdowns on this channel, easily located with the search bar. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.